I want to make a bench without using a saw, a hammer, nails, basically anything but some glue and a laser cutter. The laser cutter I'm going to be using is the A70 from Atomstack. It is a 70 watts laser with a working area of 800 by 850 mils and an operating speed of 400 millimeters per second. Basically, laser big, laser strong, laser good. The whole project wasn't without challenges though. Initially, I burned the wood and I had some issues with smoke development in my workshop. This video is sponsored by Atomstack. They reached out to me and I pitched them the idea of making a bench without using a saw. So basically all I'm going to use for this project is the laser cutter and some glue. The bench is going to have some wooden tabs and I also want some storage boxes underneath. I also want to engrave the fronts of the storage boxes. So let's take a closer look at the A70. You can use the autofocus feature or as I did here you can set the focus manually as well. Once the focus is set, we can start doing some test cuts. And as you can see right here, this laser is truly quite strong. And after dialing in some settings, it cut right through the wood. This is 18 mm thick fir wood, by the way. And I'm going to use this wood for the majority of the bench. After the first initial successful cut, I went right ahead and cut the first piece. Also, I had a bit of an issue with smoke development. This is an issue you will be having with all open frame lasers, but it's pretty easy to fix, luckily. Also, unfortunately, the first cut wasn't a success because I used the wrong settings. As you can see right here, it didn't cut all the way through. I also realized that the laser had difficulties to cut for wood knots, so I had to increase the power a bit. I also enclosed the A70 with some wood and a thick plastic foil, as you can see right here. I then hooked up an exhaust to the whole thing and that should help a lot with the smoke development. I cut another piece and as it turns out I increased the power by too much. As you can see the wood burned. Now this is fir wood and fir wood is known to burn quite easily. And as you can see right here this is basically just charcoal. Also this piece should be 83 mils long but it's only 81 millimeters long, as you can see right here. I think this happened because the laser head got caught somewhere during cutting. So I adjusted the settings and I moved the exhaust hose out of the way and gave it another try. And this time it turned out perfect. Then I used the A17 to cut out the rest of the pieces and after about a day of laser cutting, all of the pieces were done. All of the pieces fit together perfectly. So let's assemble the bench and see how it looks. This is also a good time to explain why I think the idea of building furniture with a large format laser is so interesting. So you could use a CNC router to make furniture, obviously, but there is one slight issue with that. Let's say this marker is our router. If we use it to cut out traditional joints, then you can see that the corners will almost always be slightly rounded. Now, there are obviously things you can do to work around this. For example, you can design special wood joints that can be cut by a router, or you can do some extra movements on the outer edges to make them sharp, as you can see right here. But the issue on the inner edges still remains, because you can't do extra movements there. So those would need to be fixed by hand. Now let's look at the tip of a laser. A laser is very thin. In some instances, the laser will be thinner than a human hair. I will be using a thin marker to represent the laser here. And as you can see here, I am able to cut very sharp corners. And that allows me to use traditional wood joints, as you can see right here. Now I have to sand the entire bench to get rid of some of these burn marks. Fortunately they are only on the surface so they can be removed quite easily, as you can see here. After 
the sanding and sanding and some more sanding, it was finally time for some more sanding. And this is what the bench looked like after an hour of sanding. Quite good. And even though I liked the look of the light wood, I still wanted to stain the entire thing. So that's what I'm going to do. I also applied some furniture oil to protect the wood. And here is the finished bench. Now all that's missing are the boxes. So back to the laser cutter. This time I'll be cutting 8mm thick MDF wood. The A7T can cut up to 12mm thick MDF board. So cutting 8mm thick board was a breeze. So I cut all the pieces out, glued them together and here we go, a finished box. It's as easy as that. I also designed and cut two smaller boxes that will fit in the middle of the bench later on. Next I cut some cover boards that I'm painting in some gold effect acrylics. These covers will be glued to the front of the boxes, but before that we have to engrave them. The A7T has two operation modes, 35 watts and 70 watts. So we are going to switch the laser to 35 watts for engraving and then we are going to set the distance to engraving and start the first job. And it looks great. I'm actually surprised how well this one turned out. Now it's a bit difficult to make out the design, but we are going to fix that later. In total it took around half an hour to an hour to engrave each of these designs, depending on the size of the design. Now during all this I was actually getting kind of hungry, so I was wondering if you could engrave an apple on the A7T. So I tried it. And as it turns out, yeah, you can. And the results are actually kind of good, like you can make out the eagle here. There is just a slight issue that the apple has a rounded surface, so it was kind of difficult for the A7T to stay in focus here. But other than that, it looks pretty good. Plus, the apple is still edible. Once all of the designs were engraved, it was finally time for the magic final touch. So I will be using some acrylic speed paint from Army Painter. Now the amazing thing about this paint is that it is quite thin while covering still quite well. I can easily apply this paint quite broadly and then wait for it to dry a little bit. It will dry in the recesses first and then I can just remove the excess with some damp paper. And then we are left with an awesome looking design. I repeated this for every single design and you can just see how much more the design pops once I applied the speed paint. And now that I applied the paint, you can also see all of the amazing details. The A7T really did an amazing job engraving all of these designs. Now all that was left to do is glue the designs to the boxes and we're done. After making a big project with the A7T, what do I think about it actually? Well, I think it has a lot of potential for big projects, like when you want to do big woodworking projects, the fact that you can switch between 70 and 35 watts for cutting and for engraving is a really great idea and very unique, I haven't seen that before. And the fact that it has this really insane work area makes it really 
an enabler for really unique big woodworking projects. But really the only downside I see is that it is a open frame laser. So you will have to build yourself some sort of enclosure like I did, or you have to use the machine in a well ventilated area. That's a downside that all open frame lasers have. So that's not really specific to this machine, but it is something you should keep in mind. And here is the finished bench.